Mohammed Hani. I am uh, a professor of family medicine uh, at the Arabian Gulf University in Kingdom of Bahrain and in Helwan University, Egypt. This is uh, how an evaluation uh, sheet looks like. And uh, an evaluation sheet really helps you uh, to standardize the performance of your assessors and how they look at the performance of the candidates in an OSCE exam. It is the main tool for this. Uh, so it's very important to get it to do it in a proper way according to the standards. This one belongs to the, uh, this evaluation sheet belongs to the uh, Family Medicine exam Examination Board. And it looks like this because we wanted to put it or scan it by a, an optical scanner in order to make it easier uh, for data entry. Uh, so what does it contain? It contains domains of performance, descriptors under each domain, grades, overall judgment box, and serious concerns box. We will come to each one of those uh, and explain how to write it and what's, why it, is it uh, why it is important. So for the domains, we have three domains. And this is the model by the Royal College of General Practitioners. You can change the domains, but try to make the evaluation sheet as simple and concise, specific as much as you can. So the first category is data gathering, technical and assessment skills, clinical management skills, and interpersonal skills. Under the data gathering, the technical and assessment skills, you put anything that's related to the clinical reasoning, to the data gathering in order to reach a clinical judgment, including choosing physical examination, uh, which, which physical examination to conduct, which investigation to request, and interpreting the results including the performance of the psychomotor skills the, uh, themselves the, uh, and procedures, including using therapeutic, uh, uh, using diagnostic and therapeutic instruments. The second domain is clinical management skills. Under this, you will put recognition and management of common medical problems, demonstrating a structure, a scheme, uh, which is structured and flexible approach uh, to decision making, you will also test uh, uh, the ability of the candidate to demonstrate uh, dealing with multiple comorbidities. This is important, particularly in family medicine, but to, uh, also to every other specialty. And you will also, under clinical management skills, assess the demonstration of his ability to promote a positive approach to health, which, is, which includes also health education. The last domain is interpersonal skills here you want the candidate to demonstrate using communication skills and communication techniques to understand the unique experience of the patient illness to develop a shared approach to management of problems with the patient and to practice ethically with respect to equality and diversity so these are the three main domains that we are using under each domain we have a set of descriptors that we are using. These descriptors need to be case specific. If you put down generic descriptors like focused history taking, uh, conduct a proper examination, you will leave the floor open for assessors to make assumptions and to put uh, uh, their own expertise as a confounder to the standards that they are assessing against. So please write a case-specific descriptor under each domain. It is advisable to have a, a suitable number of descriptors. For example, for a case, if you, if you uh, choose to use 16 descriptors and each descriptor is like uh, two lines uh, long, it will, you will make it very difficult for assessors to really focus uh, on uh, uh, how the candidate is performing and they will be, the, uh, will be very overwhelmed and preoccupied with the, all the writing that they have in the evaluation sheet. So it's, it's advisable to have a one-page evaluation sheet with six to nine descriptors. It is advisable for, uh, while writing the descriptors to use three to four specific case-specific positive descriptors these are describing what a competent candidate should do and three to four negative descriptors 
which describe what a poorly performing candidate is expected to do. You also can use generic indicators uh, uh, or descriptors and make them specific to a case. This is how the, the generic descriptors look like. They use it in the Royal College of General Practitioners in order to make it easier for case writers to come out with the positive indicators and the negative indicators. So for each domain, they have a set of positive indicators and negative indicators. What you need to do while writing your, uh, uh, designing your checklist or the evaluation sheet is to turn these generic uh, indicators into uh, case specific ones. I will show you, show you an example uh, shortly, but first we need to discuss the criteria of good descriptor. A good descriptor needs to be case specific. We agree on this. You don't want uh, different judgments by your assessor. It needs to be something that they can really observe. You don't uh, uh, want to, them to make any inferential judgment about the candidates, for example, intention or attitude or, or perception. So uh, you put a description of something that they really, that they can really observe. It needs also to be under the correct domain out of the three domains that we have just mentioned. And it really needs to contribute to the focus of the station. So a good, interesting descriptor, but that does not contribute, does not add value to the focus of your station, shouldn't be really in your evaluation sheet. And the last thing for the descriptor that it needs to be singular. You don't need to add more than one action verb in one descriptor. For an example, we write in an evaluation sheet that the candidate inquires about symptoms that would confirm or exclude cancer. We are being very specific here. The generic descriptor will, will be like, takes a full and focused history. Writing it in this form will open, will make it open for different interpretations by your assessors. So you better use this form. And instead of writing that the candidate should be aware of the British Thoracic Society guidelines about asthma management, you simply put that the candidate needs to add corticosteroids to the bronchodilators that the, that, that the patient is already using because you want to prevent assumptions that, uh, or you, you want to reduce uh, the variety and the differences between uh, among the assessors. Here you assume, if you use this form, you will assume that the assessor, all the assessors in all the floors or the mirrors of the, uh, the uh, OSCE exam have the same knowledge and I have the updated knowledge, please put it very simple and remind them of what uh, do you want to assess. So the next thing will be the grades that we have here. As you can see, we, are have, we, we have an even number of grades. The purpose of this, that you need, the, you need your assessors to, uh, to, have, to have a, make a decision, either to pass the candidate or to fail the candidate. If you put an odd set uh, number of, uh, of, uh, of grades here, you will, the assessor, if the candidate is not performing very well and they are not sure wh whether he is a passing or a failing candidate, they will put him, put him probably in the middle. They, it's tendency to the mean, but you need them to really make a decision. Is, is he a, a passing candidate in, in this, under these two uh, uh, grades or a failing candidate? To help the assessors uh, make up their minds and, and their judgment, you might use what we call grade descriptors or word pictures. It is a, a, a detailed description of what generally a clear passing candidate would do, a marginally passing candidate would do, a clear failing or a marginally failing candidate would do. This is an example of this in uh, the domain of uh, examination. So, and this is something that you need to train your assessors on before conducting the OSCE exam. They need, because it standardizes their judgment. They know what a clear passing candidate should do in means of conducting the examination and examination techniques. And 
for the marginally passing candidates who has minor deviations and minor errors for the margin who is the marginally failing and who is the clearly failing candidate this really helps to standardize the performance of the assessors the last two things are the serious concerns box so if a candidate you perceive him as dangerous his practice his actions that he took he will he takes or he doesn't take is jeopardizing the life of the patient will probably introduce harm to the patient or his attitude his behavior is not acceptable for dealing with you or the patient with the assessor or the patient you take the serious concern box and write down why you are considering this candidate uh, to be investigated or this case to be investigated and the examination committee will investigate this as case by case individually to understand uh, why do you consider this candidate as the, uh, a serious concern you have serious concerns regarding his performance the last thing is the overall judgment also known as the overall uh, rating of the candidate so we have also the four categories in other examinations we might have different categories for the overall judgment the overall judgment is very helpful in the standard setting of the OSCE exam and we will come to this after maybe uh, one or two presentations uh, and you will see the significance of the overall judgment later uh, it's simply these are descriptors that we train the assessors on to identify to recognize who is the clearly passing candidate overall overall performance it should not be related to his performance in specific domains so my overall impression my gut feeling about this candidate that he's a clearly passing because he meets the standard the expected standard of performance his approach is fluent focused technically proficient and he shows sensitivity and actively shares ideas uh, uh, and empowers the patient this part in red here describes the communication part for a marginally passing candidate we have the description for a marginally failing candidate we have the description and for the clearly failing candidate we also have the description written in words these are word, word pictures or great descriptors so after observing the candidate the assessor will give the overall judgment or the global rating which we will use later in standard setting these are the contents of the uh, evaluation sheet and this is why we uh, put each each of them and this is how to write each of them thank you very much i hope that you find this useful and uh, stay tuned for our next presentation